grew up in this beautiful natural world at the foot of Mount Tamalpais, and that had a big impact on me. So I loved going out in the woods and going down to the creek in the winter when the water was pouring down and the fish were swimming and going down all the trails. And, and then when I was pretty young, I started going up on Mount Tamalpais because I could go up some trails from my house onto Tamalpais and Summit and end up up on the fire roads and get right on up under the East Peak very quickly. I like Phoenix Lake. I don't know why it has a magical quality. I love to hike around it. I used to run around it, keep in shape. It's a beautiful place. It's never been changed. It's uh, got a tiny little path that goes all the way around. You, you park down at the bottom of the hill and then you can hike up the path and go around it. And it's a, just a peaceful place. My back door, out my front door, down at the beach. I mean, I can walk five minutes in any direction. I have stacks of paintings that I've done just from right here in the corner. That's what I love about Marin. That's the reason I moved to Marin. Everywhere you go is a scene. On Tempe Lake, partially because it's just a beautiful, beautiful view of the mountain. I like the reflective qualities of the lake also, depending on what the weather's doing. There can be mirror-like reflections, there can be partial reflections, there can be no reflections when the wind is blowing. It's a very active area. Uh, I'd say that area and along the, the shores of Richardson Bay and Mill Valley also, there's a, a dynamic quality of the fog pouring in and the effect of light on the land. I love painting Loma Alta, which is outside my home here. And there's a beautiful view of it right up the street there. Uh, certainly in West Marin, there's a lot of beautiful places. love painting the beaches as well, like Stinson Beach, uh, Limantour, Rodeo Beach. I think also from the top of Bald Hill in San Anselmo, that's one of my favorite places, one of my favorite views of Tam. Uh, also from up in Fairfax, up on Azalea Hill, looking uh, towards Tam from that area. Uh, another favorite trail is the Estero Trail out at um, uh, Point Reyes National Seashore. Then again, there's uh, the dynamic quality of the tides coming and going and how that affects the look of the landscape there. Bolinas Lagoon is another favorite spot that I have. I've worked from Bolinas hundreds of times. There are many places I love. I love Bolinas Lagoon. I love Tamales Bay. I love anywhere up on Mount Tam. There's so many places of beauty that to name any one of them would probably be not quite accurate. But also with the wildlife, any place where there are a lot of, of birds. I've been painting twice when mountain lions have come by. Marin County, of course, was a really inspiring place to be, especially Mill Valley, because there the peninsula is so narrow. You've got the bay, you've got the mountain, and then you've got the sea right over the mountain. And by the time you're 11 or 12 years old, you can hike over to the, the sea. There's something about the interplay of the, the water and the land here, and the way there's all these little micro environments, because the, the sea and the bay are two different kinds of water. I mean, it's pretty rare. And so you have the meeting of all these different environments, and so you have all this wonderful vegetation. And, and probably once an incredible amount of wildlife, especially bird life. And around here, you can still see some of it. So it's just a rich, rich natural world. What is it, about 40, 60 percent of Marin County has all been preserved for open space? Maybe more than that. I have friends who live in L.A. and they tell me about having to drive hours to find a scene to paint. I tell them about walking out my front door. It's all there. Couldn't find a better place to paint. And all year round. You know, if you're living on the East Coast, you got to paint snow in the winter. Here, some of our best days of painting are in December and January. The colors are just gorgeous. So it's an endless supply of subject matter, Marin. That's why there's so many artists here. I love knowing that nature is nearby. I always can hear coyotes at night. I can see squirrels, deer, raccoons just in my immediate neighborhood. And I have lived in the city, and I knew that coming to Marin, I would be in a beautiful place. In fact. After coming home from a long trip, there's something about Marin that feels like home. I think that's a feeling other people have felt as well when you see Mount Tam. We're just very fortunate to have this beautiful place to live in. And if you don't have a home with a view, usually within a five minute walk or drive, you can see the ocean or the bay or a forest or a farmland. I think we're just extremely fortunate to live here.
a lot of it has to do with the foresight of people who have preserved it. There's something like 200,000 acres here that have been preserved here in Marin. Marin is really exceptional in the fact that people preserved great tracts of wonderful places. Muir Woods and Mount Tam and the watershed. People who live here who are who are blessed to begin with, if you're an artist or not an artist, this is the most incredible place and it gives such a sense of renewal and joy and beauty to anybody who lives here. And if you're an artist, you're particularly lucky because here at your fingertips are just about all the kinds of landscapes you could ever want uh, to paint. It's just, it's just a, a treasure. Oh, I, I love Marin. Marin is the nicest place I've ever lived in my life. Marin is like paradise for me compared to anywhere <laughs> in my mind. I could ride for three hours and not see a soul. I mean, how many cities can you be 20 minutes from and ride a horse for three hours and not see a soul? Only in Marin County. I realized, gosh, all my life I came from this wonderful place and I've been going to all these other parts of the world and interested in all these other things. And, and really, this is the place where so much that's positive in the world is happening. This is the place to be. I guess I, I am very much inspired. I'm a visual artist, I'm a representational artist. And when I see something that excites me visually, I think, well, how can I capture that in paint? And one of the processes is to see what's, what am I really cluing into, what I want to have be the focal point, and how can I simplify everything around that. I don't make any amends about, I like things to be pleasing. You know, I'm, I'm looking for beauty. I'm not looking for uh, political statements or trying to tell people about how horrible things are. I've seen horrible things in the world, and I'll leave that to uh, the photographers or whoever. What I'm looking for is beauty. <laughs> I just, I really uh, love art. I like all kinds of art, all kinds of ways of expressing art. I love creating things that other people can enjoy and make them happy. I get happy helping others be happy. I'm out there five days a week and often in the same places. So I will often see things at different times a year. Certain places I will go at certain times a year. After it rains, I will go along a place that I go in the winter when all the little streams are running. This time of year, the light is low for so long that there's other places that I know are going to be nice low light and I will revisit those places. Some I'll pass through and then want to go back the next day and do. I go over things in, in my head uh, when I'm on the bus or walking down the street or, or things like that. I, I get all my thinking done in other places but when I paint it's kind of a, I just grab the paint and paint. So I try to have some kind of serenity or, or you know, thoughtlessness about it. The ideas are really easy to come by. I, um, I hike in the hills just about every day, and for a while I was running also. And so I would always see things uh, that I wanted to create, and that's true for painting as well as printmaking. But particularly uh, in the beginning stages of working with screen printing, uh, the hazy days, the days when there were uh, those divisions uh, that fog makes in the landscape around here, that I would just be outside and think, oh, it's a silk screen, <laughs> you know, and just, and want it. I, sometimes I would run back home and get my camera, sometimes I would sketch and just try to capture that layering process, uh, either on film or in my sketchbook. People always ask me, what subject matter interests you most of all? And it's not a subject matter. To me, it's a, an effect. It's the effect that the light has on the objects that I'm painting. I never know what I'm going to paint until I'm out in my car or motorcycle or a horse riding, and all of a sudden I see something. And I'll note the time of day it is, I'll note the angle, the light, and I'll come back the next day at that same time and set up my paints and get that, that impression that I got that, that first time. I like being outside and painting it 
a painting that would give off a sense of light and whatever light means. To many people, it's God. You know, God is light, light is God. The muse speaks to me through the landscape. So I'm a literalist. I don't just have things come out of nowhere. I, I'm always working with what I see. And yet, the whole printmaking process is a wonderful way, if you're a literal-minded person like me, to move into the abstract. When I'm sketching something, it's my vision of it. But, but then there's all this process of reversal and layering and months of work and carving it all and reverse into blocks. It, it has nothing to do with what you see at the end. I mean, it makes it, but, but it's not at all immediate. And, and what you're doing isn't turning into the thing that you see on the paper that you're doing it on. It's all happening on a wood block that's only one part of a big, long process. So printmaking has this wonderful, fortuitous uh, nature to it, where it, it just comes together on its own. It takes on a life of its own, and at the end, it's always a surprise. Sometimes it's a disappointment, and sometimes it's a wonderful surprise that you didn't expect, and that's where the vision is. But, but it's working its way through in such an abstract way that you can't even say it's your personal vision. That's what I love about it. The materials take on their own life. You know, and, and that's really fun. I think art has spirit and it can tell you stories and you can paint something and maybe figure something out about your life that may be happening and you can read it and learn it and, and it's very interesting. I see more myself moving through a landscape that even if I'm out there, however long I might stop, whether in the early 90s, I was going out painting a lot, but it's still just passing through. And especially now that I'm running through these places, there's a sense of movement through it. It's not being there and capturing it, it's taking it all with me or passing through it with a sense of time. What I do on these, I, uh, I, I lay into the paper with, with so much pigment that I get to the point where I'm just moving it around. And I, it sort of rises and falls from the surface. And what, how I know I'm done is when uh, I can tell what, what it's going to look like when it's dry. <laughs> I'll just know. I, I think it's the moisture in the air. Uh, that allows the sun to do that, that it catches the light in a way and makes those silhouetted shapes. And often you'll see that the fog is in between all those different ridges as well. And so you get that separation, that stacking, that helps give you that sense of depth and space in landscape. The landforms flatten out into big shapes of color that uh, it's an atmospheric quality of light where you get these receding ridges going back into space. And I was very drawn to that in the landscape and wanted to recreate that on canvas and on paper. The purpose of your life is to express your soul. You, you, the main purpose of your life is the soul's intention to express itself. And that's what I do. You know, I, I have something I want to paint figures in oil, oil paint. So I, I have that feeling. It's all maybe just sort of in the chest, abdomen area. I have that feeling and I have to get it out on the canvas and I do it. And then all of a sudden I'll, I'll get this feeling from inside that I want to do charcoal drawings and I'll have to then do that and that comes out of me. I paint to be in nature. It's kind of a prayer that says thank you for letting me be here and doing this because the rest of my life isn't 
I don't get enough joy, I guess, in my life. Things haven't, I think other things have been disappointing, yeah? Relationships, jobs, parenting, all very hard. Painting is the place where I can just really be peaceful. One of the things that I find about landscape is by trying to capture one moment in time. Um, there have been times like when I've been out at Bolinas, the fog lifts, the sun pours in, the whole lagoon lights up, that if you can capture that one moment, it in turn has a timelessness uh, that speaks to universal landscape. The transcendence that you feel when you're out, or at least that I feel when I'm out in landscape, I like feeling small. I like feeling that, you know, I'm just uh, transient here and try to capture that timelessness. I love nature. I love being out in the middle of a field somewhere and not having anyone around for hours. That's where your, your mental state really comes into play in painting because you, you are so relaxed and it takes so much concentration when you're painting. I've had coyotes walk right up to me because I'm not moving. I've had birds almost land on my easel because you're just so engrossed in the scene, in the situation, that you're almost oblivious to what's happening around you. So you're, the, the, the saying of you're in the moment is so true when you're painting, because you really are in the moment. It's just a beautiful experience for me to be in nature. When I was young, my, for our uh, vacations, my family, we would go on really long backpacking trips in the High Sierra. I got really in, in touch with nature uh, that way as a youth. I think since when I was little, just being out in nature gave me so much peace and a sense of renewal and a sense of joy. There's nothing more joyful than being out in nature. And to be able to capture that on canvas, I think is what brought me additional satisfaction. Only satisfaction isn't the right word. It really is, it's a passion, it's a joy. And it's something you want to have again and again and again. Uh, my mother sent me a picture on a Nature Conservancy magazine of these kids. They called them city kids in the magazine. And they were running down through a creek catching butterflies. And these people have never probably seen a butterfly in their whole life. And that was an inspiration for me. It brought back childhood memories and it was sort of an exciting way for me to say, well, this is a part of my world and I hope you can have it and I hope it may work for you or you could have the same thing I had being born and brought up here in uh, Marin County. I would have a very hard time uh, defining a concept of God, but the closest I can come to that is being outdoors. And that's what I try to plug into, is that very, very deep sense of self and deep sense of spiritual in, in nature, and then express that through my art. I guess there are a lot of pursuits or professions which allow you this, this joy, but when you're painting, you're out of yourself. You're, you're not worried about anything else that's going on in your life. You're so focused. It's freeing. It gives you a sense of being out of your body in a way, in a sense. You're almost in a, in a metaphysical, uh, contemplative state. And there aren't too many pursuits that'll give you that, but art sure will. When I draw, I absolutely go out of my mind to another world. And when I come out of here, I'm calm, and I just want to paint more, paint more. And that's it. I become a different person. I love it. It helps me stay in the present, for one thing. I am not thinking about what I'm doing tomorrow. I'm not thinking about what I did yesterday. I'm only thinking about how am I going to get the paint onto the canvas and do it in a way that's pleasing to me. It's a, it's a very 
pleasant thing to spend hours and hours uh, carving, particularly if you have something interesting to listen to while you're doing it. But oftentimes I forget to turn anything on and I, and I just do it in silence and your mind kind of drifts around. And I always have some note paper nearby to scribble notes about different things. And I come up with lots of ideas that eventually sometimes take shape as the text of books. Personally, it's a very centering process and it's a very internal process. So part of what I find myself doing is going outside, being outside, drawing my inspiration from nature, and then coming back to the studio into the solitude of myself and trying to recreate the feeling that I gain from being outside and give it expression through color, line, and form into the paintings that I create and hoping that that somehow the magic occurs of taking that, that sense of, of joy, of serenity, of respect, awe that I find in nature and giving it back to the viewer. Well, I love it. It's like being a part of history. It's leaving something behind besides just your life. <laughs> you know, I have, I have three areas of, of talent my writing and my music and my art, and the, the thing that binds me together, I think, is my faith. Whatever I had inside of me came out on the canvas. I wasn't very good with English or with talking or writing, but I was good at putting my, my feeling and my soul and my creative side onto the canvas. I put everything on the canvas. So it, sometimes it would come out gruesome. I would paint gruesome pictures of, you know, dismembered people from war or something like that. And somebody would say, oh, you know, I don't want that hanging in my house. Or why would you paint a painting like that? And people, especially my dad, would say, paint the beautiful landscape. That's what people want. They want to see the beautiful landscape. But I also had to paint the, uh, the you know, the unpleasant parts about human nature and they came out a lot in my work. There have definitely been times when I have been completely out of balance in my life, but usually that's not what I choose to express through my art. I find uh, art as a refuge in the midst of turmoil, that that's what helps me come out of those unbalanced places, is to be outside, to hike, to be physical, and to then work with the creative process. And it's been a lifesaver time and time again in so many ways. Art saves my life. It saves my life. I'm gonna cry, oh my Lord. When things become overwhelming to me, music and art and beautiful surroundings like Marin, just, oh, it just uplifts me. It always helped me, you know, I was lucky. I hear a lot of stories in AA, a lot of people lose the, those things. You know, they, they lose their hobbies, they lose their jobs, they lose their, their family members and stuff. And I didn't lose my art. I was lucky enough to be able to use it to maintain and not completely go off the deep end. My abstract work is, is an attempt to, to convey you know, my spiritual thought. In the watercolors, in the, in the abstract watercolors, the sort of one thing kind of look, so there's a unity inside of myself that I kind of want to tap into that I, I've learned from other people and from my own personal journey as a, as a human being. I feel at my best when I'm outside. I love being outdoors. You know, there's nothing that brings me deeper joy than being outdoors. And so, again, when I'm here and working in the studio, that's what I'm trying to capture, that feeling of serenity, of peace, of smallness, of transience, of timelessness, and that deep, deep, deep well-being that I think I find only in nature. It's like being out under a night sky and seeing the stars and thinking, wow. <laughs>